Okay, how y'all doing today? It's been a long day, y'all. It's Monday. Y'all know Mondays can drag or whatever, but I hope y'all had a wonderful day. My day was good. I'm just tired, you know what I'm saying? But you know, I'm going to get me some sleep and I'm going to be refreshed in the morning. So, I wanted to come and tell y'all another um thing I realized about the narc that I was with before, you know what I'm saying? Because I ran across a video about mental illness and he was saying um, some reasons why the narcissist doesn't chase you or whatever. And so... <clears throat> The reason they don't chase you, like if, if a narcissist doesn't chase you, is because they want you to chase them, okay? And I believe that to be true because the very, ever since the first time I actually chased behind the narc because I didn't understand what was going on or whatever, I didn't understand the discard, you know what I'm saying? But he... When I when I chased him, this man blocked the number. I created another number. He I called him from it. He blocked that number too. Blocked me on all social medias. Everything that we was connected to, he blocked me on everything. And that thing crushed me. So that's what the discard is all about, basically. That's that's what it's meant for, is to break you down and make you feel like you were nothing to them. And then it'll make you chase after them. So I did that the very first time around that he discarded me for for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? Discarded me or whatever and just up out of the blue walked away. So the way he had me then, calling, begging, and pleading with him to come back home, he wanted that reaction every single time he discarded me. And so it was like he would come back into my life so he could do the discard a little bit different than he did last time because I need that reaction that she gave me the very first time that I discarded her. And so he can't get that no more. I promise you, after I told that man that I feel like an empty well without him and that I need him in my life, baby, I, I was at the lowest of the low at that time. I ain't never been that low before. He took me there. I went all the way there. I went low, low, ready to check out. That's how low I went. And so I made a vow to myself that I wasn't going to go that low no more. I might still put up with some of his foolishness at that time as we got back together and kept going through this thing over and over. But he can't get me there no more. That right there was a no-no for me. So I went on ahead and I'm just like, you know what? No, nah, you can do what you want to do, sir. But I ain't going to do that right there. So whenever he would discard me or we'll be in a separation or whatever, I don't reach out. I don't say nothing. His family members will call me. His family members or him will reach out to me. I don't say nothing to nobody. Now, if I didn't stick, stand on anything that I was going through when I was with him, I stood on no contact. He know I could play that game. That's the game that I can win because I don't call I don't do no check-ins. I don't do no check-ups. I don't do no, I just want to see if he won't, he going to answer my call. I don't do none of that. Once you block me on everything, that light right there, I was like, oh no, we, we not going to do this again. So once I made that clear to him that blocking me don't do nothing for me no more, he stopped doing that. But he still do it because he, you know what I'm saying? He think that maybe possibly one day, It'll happen again. She'll get there again where she'll end up, you know, breaking no contact and call me. No, I won't. I ain't broke no contact since the very first time I broke no contact, y'all. I promise y'all. After the first time he took me through that and I chased him and he blocked me and shut the door in my face every time I tried to make a, a, a um get through to him, baby, you won't get that no more. That's a wrap right there. And that, I promise you, I stood 10 toes down on that one right there. You, He even came back one time and I remember him saying to me, I don't know why when I leave, I don't know why you just don't call me if you need me, if you need money, if you need me or something happens to you or whatever. You could have told my son to call you, me or whatever, like when I ended up in the hospital. Why you didn't call me? For what? You discarded me. You're the reason I'm in here. So what I'm going to call you for? 
Oh, you could have just called my family. You could have called me. You could have, I, I ain't going to never just stop not answering you like that or whatever. I might block you and stuff like that. That's him trying to suck me in to being a sucker to chase him again. Mm -mm. He couldn't get me there. So he, he never changes it up though. Every time a discard is coming, I get blocked on everything. That's how I knew this time a discard was coming up because I got blocked on everything. His actions started changing. He started acting different. I'm telling you, just wake up one morning and he's like, you know what? I'm I'm over this. I'm done. I'm finna go. That's basically how I be. I'm finna go. And I'd be like, what the heck happened? Lost in the sauce. The night before could be so good. I'm telling you, he could wake up and turn the light switch on and be like, I'm out of here. I'm gone. Yep. With a straight face. I'm about to go. I'd be like, oh, well. I'm going back to where I'm going. What that mean? And he'll proceed to just start packing his stuff. I'm like, who the heck this man think he is? But now I know he think he is it, baby. He he think that he the best thing since sliced bread. And I made him think that. Me and a whole bunch of other women made him think that. But I think I, I put the icing on, on the cake heavy, baby. He was really, really smelling himself with me. He knew he had me. But psych, psych, one day a change will come. And just like he had that light switch effect. I had the light switch effect too. Because when he discarded this time, baby, I was in agreement with him. I said, you know what? I think that's best. When I said that, his jaw dropped. Like, what? Yeah. I said, I agree with you. We need to go ahead and let things go, baby, because I've been done since Thanksgiving Eve. He's sitting there looking at me like, what? I'm like, yeah. So even though you thinking now that you had the idea first, I actually had the idea first. I just let you go ahead and do what you do best. I let you walk it out. And when you was ready to go, I was ready for you to go too. He ain't like that. Not one bit. Even tried to gaslight me before he left. But I still meant what I said. No, I said, no, he was like, I'm just going because he wanted to explain to me what he's just going to do. So that way I know that he's planning on coming back. No, sir. Uh-uh. This time around, this was the final discard for me. Whether it was for you, it was definitely the final discard for me. So before he was walking out the door, he was just like, you know, while he grabbing his things up, putting them in the ride. He's like, I'm just going down there to go and solidify the place and make sure I got it in the end. You know what I'm saying? So that way when we travel and we got somewhere to stay. I say, baby, you ain't got to worry about that. I said, like I said, you leaving is the best thing for us. And he's sitting there like, what? I'm like, yeah. Because even you had the audacity to wake me up after I done been up with you all night long, arguing with you, and you called the police on me. And had the audacity, which he was entitled to that audacity, y'all. Because I'm telling you, if you ain't seen the the uh, the day he left and all, the, you got to go back to the beginning. I didn't say it all this stuff before, but just in case somebody popping in in the middle of my stories or whatever, this man done. He done did this so many times that. I would give this man a ride to leave me, not knowing that he leaving me. You know what I'm saying? He would make me think that we're just going out of town for me to drop him off to do some work. And then really, he ain't planning on coming back. But I just took him down there like a dummy. But I don't know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? So he woke me up that morning and was like, I got the money. Can you can you take me? And I'm like, heck no. Get somebody else to do it. You finna leave me. Now all the other times you tricked me into taking you to leave me. This time I know you leaving me. No, you're gonna have to find somebody else to take you, sir. I'm not doing it. 
And he thought it was fine because I've done it all those other times. He played me like that. I fell for the okie doke every time. We'll be riding in the car. He will be sneaking and putting things because he 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 tra he he comes back with a lot of stuff, but not a lot of stuff. So when he pack everything up. He leave things behind. So it it you know, it is all of that is in the in the beginning of this story. You gotta go back to get all that because I don't wanna go all the way back into all that stuff or whatever, because this video is about him um wanting me to chase him, you know, and break no contact or whatever. So that way he can be like, Oh, because he did. I'm telling you, this video that I was watching today, Mental Illness, that right there, it hit the spot because so much of what he was seeing, I've been through that. So, like, he was like, um, dang, I lost my train of thought. So, he would always tell me, like, How can I say it? So like. He basically. Will like. Gaslight me. Like. Dang. I don't know how I'm trying to say it. But either way. All the times that he done left or whatever, he does the same thing over and over and over again. But he got a little way of trying to, you know, hide how he, you know, how he leaving because he don't want it to seem like, oh, I'm leaving her. You know what I'm saying? So I need her to believe that I am just going out of town to go do some work and now I'm planning on coming back. You know what I'm saying? So he will always leave stuff behind because like he got to come he's he making sure he come back here you know what i'm saying so by him leaving his stuff behind that's supposed to be a clue for me that i'm gonna come back so if my stuff is here that means i ain't gone that that means i'm not completely done with you but i don't know these terms i don't know what this man is doing to me i just you know we got a place together and in my mind his things belong here you know what i'm saying i wanted him to be here because this is something we got together but he keep throwing it away and then you know what i'm saying just them narcissistic games that they be playing man i had you all confused and, and lost in the sauce y'all so just be aware of the red of the red flags and all of these signs because they really tricky. They really tricky. Had you thinking you crazy around here for real. But yeah, he was trying to get me to chase him, boy. I'm telling you that he had a hard time getting me to do that. Cause I'm telling you when I, when I check out, I check out and I let him be gone for however long he want to be gone. I don't call him not one time. I don't send no text. I don't do nothing. I just be mute quiet and the next time he'll hear from me is if he sent one of his flying monkeys or if he contact me himself and i would normally answer the phone for him or whatever but this time around none of that stuff is going on i think he's reaching out to me through other numbers and stuff like that but i ain't answering them if it ain't logged in my phone baby i ain't answered so if any of my people calling from an unknown number you're going to have to leave a voicemail. Because I ain't answering no, no numbers on them. None of them. I ain't finna. I don't want to accidentally hear his voice or nothing. I ain't answering nothing. Nothing at all. I promise you. So, that's all I wanted to tell y'all about was how he wanted me to chase him. And, like, you know, he was trying to gaslight me into chasing him. Telling me it's okay to, 
you know, just just call me if you need me. No, so you can feel like you big shot. And then, okay, I know what it was I was trying to say. So earlier when I was stuck trying to, you know, get my thoughts together or whatever, he was like, um, oh, dang it. This is crazy, y'all. I'm tired. I gotta be tired. It was something about the, uh, the love bombing, I guess. He was like, you can, um, you can call me or whatever, which is basically the trick to, you know, get me to fall for it or whatever. And so I wouldn't, I wouldn't go for it. Cause he would be like, you could have called my mama house or you could have, you know, you could have reached out or whatever, because letting me know that it's a game that he playing, you know what I'm saying? Cause he's like, you know, I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. I don't know why you don't just pick up the phone and call me. Trying to trick me into the falling for the, you know, the, the chasing him. So that way, so when he would say things like that, when he coming back into the relationship, he would always ask me. So if I was, if I was so such a bad person, why you still love me? And I'm like, Everybody has problems, you know what I'm saying? All I be asking for is for you to fix them. And instead of you fixing them, you get up and you walk away. Stop walking away and let's deal with things head on. And then move on past the stuff or whatever. And he was just like, I don't like for people to tell me what to do. I don't like for people to tell me when I'm wrong. I'm like, every day of your life, somebody going to tell you doing something wrong. Somebody is always going to say something to you and let you know it's constructive cr criticism. And so... Somebody is always telling us what to do, even though we are adults. We just got to make, you know, smart decisions. Somebody going to let us know we ain't always doing everything right. So somebody got to come and say, hey, you know, last night you forgot to lock the, the special door or, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So he don't want you to say nothing. He don't want you to bring out his, his wrong, his wrongdoing or whatever. And I'm just like, life ain't like that, baby. Everybody gonna get told when they're doing something wrong. Well, I don't want to hear about it when I do something wrong. Oh, you're gonna hear it. How are we supposed to work through things if we don't sit here and talk about these things? I'm just supposed to keep letting you do it. Nah, mm -mm, ain't gonna work like that. So he that was his little way of trying to smooth that in there by telling me don't tell him when he's doing something wrong. You got me jacked up. You might have got away with blood and murder, but I'm still gonna speak my mind. That part I did do. But with a narcissist, you're not going to make them accountable for nothing. They, they, He's a track star. He'll be out of here quick, fast, in a hurry. But that's all I want to say, y'all. I am so tired. I can't believe I got jacked up like that. So y'all don't be picking at me in this video. Your girl is tired. And so, you know, that ain't even an excuse. But I got mumbo jumbo head today. Like, for real, for real. But I am tired. I love you guys. I thank you for all you do. Remember, fall in love with yourself every day. Whether it's a little bit at a time, one day at a time, however you need to do it, no matter what, fall in love with yourself because you are worth it and you deserve it. And guess what? I love you. So, hey, have a wonderful day. Stay healthy. Stay prayed up. Grow you something because we don't know what society is going to be like in a little bit. Just plant you something. Get your own stuff going on. Stay ready so you don't got to get ready, okay? Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. I love you guys. Y'all have a wonderful day. Mwah.